absolutely. However, action needs to be taken really quickly. A lot of developing countries, and I would say least developed countries in particular, require the ability to map out energy futures that are um, in their interest and, and benefit them. At the moment, a lot of the investments that take place are stopgap measures, either because there's a drastic shortage of power or energy in the country, so something is done very quickly to try and meet that, or because there might be an interesting investment opportunity. In, in poor African countries, for example, uh, there are a lot of minerals. People want to go and mine those minerals. And so in order to provide that electricity, uh, the company doing the mining will, will make some kind of plan to get an electricity system up and running, but just for the mining. And in both cases, this might not be in the country's long-term interest. The countries are growing. Energy investments typically last for uh, over 20 years, 20 to 50 years. So it's essential now, and there's a big opportunity now, to make uh, investments that are clean and environmentally uh, compliant, efficient, but uh, make economic sense as well. For a country to do that, it needs to be able to develop its own plans, its own energy roadmaps. And I would suggest that there's, a, there's an incredibly strong, uh, let's say, challenge in a positive sense for the donor community to help empower countries to, uh, to make these roadmaps. It's a, it's a cliched saying, but I think it's much better to teach people how to fish than to, than to give them fish. And, and it's, a, it's a difficult thing for uh, donor and aid agencies to, to conceive. Sometimes I think that uh, people would like to see things on the ground quickly as opposed to maybe taking a step back and, and having a longer view that, that would be in the country's best interest. Around 2 million people die every year because they have access to or use energy in a way that's, uh, that's detrimental to their health. And I'd just like to, to bring this into a context of a lot of developed country policy makers right now. If in the developed world we thought that in five years time because of climate change, two million people in uh, the developed world were going to die every year, this would make us move to action so quickly. It would be incredible. The, Bailing out the banks, which doesn't cost very much, it would cost a lot more money in, in, in relation, would just be, be seen as um, a small fry in order to deal with this big problem. Okay, but the reality is, is that this problem exists, and it exists in a part of the world where sometimes folk don't want to get uh, as involved. But, you know, these are this, this, we're one global race and I think it's really important that we address the needs of the vulnerable. If the climate is changing, many studies indicate that those vulnerable people are still going to be vulnerable, in fact more vulnerable. And so the sooner we do something about their plight, uh, the better.